y 334 fallecidos desde el viernes. El número total desde que comenzó la... Pues aquí estamos en el aeropuerto de Dubai. Acabo de llegar, se supone que todo iba bien, que volaba esta tarde a Tel Aviv para ver un masterclass y operar en Jerusalén, en Gaza, pero todo se ha torcido y parece que hay una, hace falta una carta de invitación. Bien, a la puerta de embarque, lo conseguimos a última hora. Me dejan embarcar, me dejan volar a Tel Aviv. Al final podremos hacer el masterclass y lo veréis en el documental que vamos a hacer. Ha sido duro, se ha conseguido hablar con el ministro última hora. The way to Gaza was never easy. As if Gaza is an isolated country, far away from the rest of the planet. 18th December 2020 at Dubai International Airport. Time was slow. The most you could do is wait. Only wait. After a few hours, time seems to speed up. You are a few minutes away from the plane's takeoff. At a certain moment, you wonder to yourself, how many countries in the world ask you for a special permit to be able to visit? But before you find the answer and think about going back, you get the permit in the last two minutes. And suddenly, you find yourself at the gate of the plane. These two minutes were able to recreate the story and write a different ending. When Diego contacted me that uh he saw me many times going to Gaza and posting some uh, uh, posts and pictures in, in, in the social media about that. He said, for us, I, I really want to come to Gaza. Is it possible? It's more like mission impossible because of the pandemic and because of the timing. And it may cause you some troubles as a, as, as, as a sergeant and as a, a foreigner. So maybe we, we delay it for later. So I, I really didn't know what, what to, tell the, to tell him at that moment. So I, I, thought, I thought he was kidding. Then he contacted me again. He said, Firas, I have the donations. I have the company will sponsor. Everything is okay. So let's go to Gaza. Okay, Fira, so we arrived at the checkpoint. We arrived. And we have to leave the car here. Yes. And take, take all the all stuff. The we cannot cross. And cross by foot. We have all the equipment, the staplers, yes, double lumen tube, everything. Some Crazy. Drugs, yeah. Okay. We go. We are carrying all the material. Yeah. Our instruments to do the surgeries. Yes, we have to carry ourselves. Yes. Perfect. Everything looks okay. <laughs> we'll see. This is just the beginning. Alone in the border, huh? Yeah, nobody in the border. Look. Nobody in the border. Yeah. We have three checkpoints today. 
Palestinian, Israeli, and Hamas. Now we are entering the Israeli checkpoint. We are already passing. We go to the Palestinian side. Let's go. Everything looks okay after one hour waiting. Yes. Okay, we have rejected the VIP service with the ambulance. So we go with this, yeah? It's better. Come on, come on. Let's go for the ride. Inshallah. Gaza, 19th of December, 2020. Cry of pain caused by injustice. Just like how two million Palestinians are living in a besieged city since 2008 in an area no more than 360 square kilometers. You try to imagine life after three wars. Concrete blocks on the edges of what once used to be the most beautiful streets. Piles of rubble destruction and demolished houses. Thousands of displaced families who were left homeless. Thousands of civilian casualties and thousands of injured people. And you wonder how many injured people are living with shrapnel in their body. After the bombarding of the power plant in 2006, every Palestinian in Gaza spends more than half of his day with no electricity. To what extent can the Gaza archive absorb more destruction, pain, and death? But you know what? Gaza remains strong, and the hands of its kind people are always extended to help. Even at the time when everything remains closed due to the pandemic and lockdown restrictions, the only available way to fight the virus in this city. People of Gaza welcomed us most beautifully I like to help people. I like to teach uh, what, what I know. I like to share the knowledge. I like to go to other places to, um, you know, to meet other cultures, to learn from them, um, explore the world, um, especially teach um, uh, surgery and help patients in the places where they need, in the poorest places. It is where I feel more, you know, more happy when I'm going there. Um, you know, thanks. Thanks to our visit, we can improve the, a little bit the quality of life of, of the patient. And this is the most, uh, satis the biggest satisfaction I can, I can have from, from my trips. People of Gaza welcomed us most beautifully and opened a hotel at our service. <laughs> Then we had
had uh, several surgeries. It was also very difficult to organize these surgeries because the surgeon in Gaza, Dr. Larini, he prepared 10 cases for our visit and five of them were positive for COVID just one day before the surgery. So you can see that the huge impact of this disease on the world, especially on, on poor countries and poor cities, city under, under siege. Nobody can go in, nobody can go out. In 2010, I developed the surgical technique, which is called uniportal baths. That means we operate the lamp through a single and a small incision. This operation became more and more popular because I was traveling around the world to teach this technique to many countries during the last years. My life was in airports, planes and hospitals all over the world. Um, thanks to this, thanks to this effort, nowadays it is one of the most popular techniques in the world. And thousands of surgeons are using and adopting this uniportal bath because it's the less invasive to operate the uh, lung and the chest by using just a single small uh, three centimeter incision. So the recovery of the patient is quicker, uh, less pain and less uh, rate of complications after surgery. Very good. Montage. Thoracic surgery um, can be divided to two types, the traditional and the modern thoracic surgery. And the modern one is expensive. You cannot perform new techniques of thoracic surgery like robotic or thoracoscopy without uh, having the expensive materials to do that. So that's why um, many hospitals uh, cannot adopt that because of the financial situation. Give it to me. Give me one. Give me the... Time in Gaza passed quickly, but during that short time, we could live the Gaza life with some of its mysteries and difficulties. And what could be more disturbing than electricity cut off while performing surgery? Or you are facing a struggle between you and yourself whether to stop the surgery and run to save another patient's life who was just shot in the chest. Emergency to decide that I'm stable, but I'll do it quick. Yeah. 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 With that, you have lived part of the suffering of years of power cuts in all over the Gaza Strip for many hours of the day, learned other kinds of unnecessary additional stress in our job. I'm 
Gaza. by Gaza. What's your first impression about the well, visit? I'm impressed to see uh, the most populated place on the earth empty, completely, the streets empty. Because of so the COVID? Because of the COVID. Uh, people is very kind. I like it. It's different mm-hmm. feeling. In, in Gaza, now the electricity yeah. is uh, uh, eight hours on and eight hours off. Two years ago when we were here, the, uh, the electricity was um, four hours per day only. And after that, the electricity is off and people bought the uh, generators to produce uh, electricity for their houses. Some of them generators, some of them solar system, which is extremely expensive. So imagine to live your life with uh, four hours of electricity per day. Crazy. Yeah, it is, it is difficult. Several times because I said more, more than more than ten times, we have done many surgeries here, and uh, step by step, Dorad started to learn very fast the the single port technique, and he started to apply it on his patients. So Diego, now we are heading to Jerusalem again. Yes. We have to go to border, but one thing is missing now. Very important. Yeah, very important. We need the the result of PCR of COVID test. Yes, I did so a can, uh, I did a PCR yesterday. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about the result because no. we need the PCR to go back to yeah, Jerusalem. If the result is positive, you stay here uh, 14 oh days. God. If the result is positive, I will stay here 14 days. That means that this is uh, dramatic for me <laughs> because we are in Christmas. Yeah. Um, in, that, in two days, I have to be with, with family. my family for Christmas dinner. Okay. So please, inshallah. We hope it's I negative. hope it will be negative. Thank so you. So we are going to check. Diego, so no. our test is negative now? Alhamdulillah. But you feel sad. Goodbye, Gaza. Bye, Gaza. Oh. A pleasure. See you in Jerusalem. And you experienced yourself the feeling of long waiting times at the borders, crossing on the way out of Gaza. It's going back to Jerusalem. Yeah, it's finally. finally. We did it. It was a very hard day. Finally, like one of the most hardest days ever. Five hours on the borders? How, how, how long we stay? We stay four hours in the border. Four hours. Four hours. Oh Alone. Nobody. No water. 
nothing crazy. Selling Jerusalem. Yeah. Traffic jam. Traffic jam. And the entrance of Jerusalem. You are very tired. Jerusalem, 21st of December, 2020. The moment you smell the air of Jerusalem, your heart starts beating faster. Yeah, during the day it's more amazing. You leave a space for your eyes to enjoy the beauty of a thousand years of history. Well, th this conference is not the first conference that I organize, but this one is very special because it's, it's in my hospital, in my operation room, and um, in this conference we invited uh, the chiefs of departments in, in Israel who are skilled surgeons in, in Israel, and some of them don't know a lot about this uniportal technique, so this makes them curious to know more about this technique. So they found it a, a very good opportunity that we have a, a, the most important surgeon in the world, Diego Gonzalez, in, in Al Maqasid Hospital. And in addition, I was with him. I'm one of his students. And we were, were both operating in, in separate rooms. So we could give a lot of teaching for these surgeons about our technique. Perfect. No, surgery is not just an act, it's not like a manual thing, it's more. When you are a surgeon, you have to be a person, a psychologist. You need to talk with the patient, you need to explain him what is going to happen, and you need to give him confidence that everything is going to go well. Well, well, operate the lung is not like, you know, a small surgery, it's always a big surgery. So um, um, you need to give the confidence to them and the best way is to talk to the patient before the operation, the day before, <clears throat> explaining everything um, and be kind with them, be kind with them. No, not like a doctor, you should be like a friend. Okay, uh, about you have two, uh, both sides, right? They said I have both sides, but they said that you are going to take only the right one because this uh, left one is negligible for so small. But it's your decision. You go with the camera and take the right one. Yeah. Other option is go from here. It's more, uh, easy, which is easier for me. Let me think about it. I need to see the pet CT, then I decide. I think a surgeon, uh, in, in his life, he, he passed uh, phases. In the first uh, phase of his life, he is hungry to learn. All the time he wants to learn. And at, at some point, he is changing from a, a hunger to learn to hunger to do, to perform surgeries, to, to improve your technique and improve your skills. And the next phase is, is, is hunger to teach. Like after you are satisfied of your level, you started to think that you, your message is not completed without teaching uh, the next generation. Because if anything happened to you, if you die, all the things that you learned will die with you. Okay, like this. care when a hospital is old. If it works well, it's fine. Sometimes you go to a very fancy and new hospitals and they're empty. 
and they have no equipment, they have no people well prepared. I never look when I go to a hospital about how fancy it is and how modern, I never, I never see this, I never value this. What I value is the work of the people. If they can't do everything, if they can't work in an old OR, but they have equipment for the operation, and they have a good post-operative care, and they have a good uh, ICU, and they have a good uh, nurse, nurse station, everything is fine. Even though it's very old, but if, the, if the, the quality of the treatment is good, it's fine. Yes, I have so many memories uh, from the patients about successful surgeries and also about uh, uh, bad outcomes. I remember we had, since three years, we have done like 700 cases. There were some three or four cases who died. And um, for a surgeon to, to lose a patient, it's, it's a big trauma, you know. It, it, it makes you nervous, makes you uh, restless for, for weeks or maybe months. So uh, I remember all the patients that I lost. The visit to Jerusalem was short, but who knows, maybe the ancient city will call you back one day. I am sure at that time you will answer the call, and if you ask yourself why, you will hear the answer in each heartbeat. So, what do you think about this journey? Finally, we are uh, completed the master class in Jerusalem, uh, the weekend in Gaza. I think it was amazing. I'm really glad everything worked well, uh, all the cases did very well. And now it's time to go back. Some difficulties, but everything was yes. perfect. Especially living in Gaza was hard, very difficult. But uh, finally we did. Uh, now it's time to go back to the airport and fly back to Europe. Okay, perfect. So let's go to the airport. Yes, let's go. Bye bye, goodbye Jerusalem, see you next time. At a particular moment, you can lose everything. Family, future, dreams. But justice still exists in the souls of people, and grudge is inevitable. I was referred to by my family doctor, to Dr. Firas Abakar who in turn told me that uh, the basic procedure for thymoma that a lot of hospitals do adopt is to make an open, uh, what, looked, what might look like an open heart surgery, which is a very invasive procedure. And uh, they came up with this new technique that was founded by Dr. Diego, uh, Diego Gonzalez. A psychological effect of having the doctor visit the patient. It's the first time I go into surgery in my life. And uh, uh, by the doctor coming and, and telling me that the procedure should be easy and uh, it should be a, a successful operation, it uh, made it very, very easier for me psychologically to go under uh, pr uh, the operation procedure. In a fateful two-minute at the Dubai airport, Diego and Firas changed the course of this story. And they were able to give hope for some people, to live a better life with their families, with less pain and less suffering. Come on. الحمد لله سريت أحسن صار عندي التنفس أحسن إن شاء الله خير. But their journey has ended, and the situation in Gaza is still sad. People are still waiting for relief at that part of the world.